Hi, Callum. How you doing? Hi, hi John. You, you spoke about having to almost take a slap in the face and show personality to overcome the challenges. What's your personal motivation going into a season like this and, and pushing Celtic forward into uh, new challenges and, and more difficult challenges? Yeah. Um, when you become champions, then the the target on your back becomes even bigger um, and you have to work even harder. You got to go the extra mile. You got to you got to do more. You got to help the team. You got to run harder with your mates. And like I said, everybody wants your scalp, so you have to be prepared for that. You know, you you've got what everyone else wants, and and to stay at the top, then you got to be super hungry and super motivated. And and I think whenever the team takes to the pitch, that's what we have to show. The decision to bring out a new uh, about the, the making of the Celtic captain. Um, what what was behind that and just a question on your the, the football we're played at the moment. Um, the fans are loving it, and and do you get the same sense of enjoyment out of it? Yeah, obviously. Just firstly, touching on the book, um, you know, the club came to me and, and sort of floated the idea, um, just about doing a book in in terms of the looking back at the career I've had so far, and 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 just trying to put a few words on it. So I, I think it was a nice one. Um, you know, there's a lot of charity work in it as well, which is always nice. So, um, yeah, I was happy to do it, and it's it's been nice sort of looking back um, at previous achievements and and things like that. So, um, that was that was nice. But um, yeah, just on the second point, the football has been excellent so far. Um, I think you can see within the group, within the team, that everybody's enjoying it. Um, it's really fluid attacking football and, and that's the way that the manager wants us to play and, and obviously that's the way the players want to play as well. Just wondering, talking there about the type of football you're playing now as well, you're changing, you know, you've changed position on the field quite a lot throughout your career and we're just wondering what's been the biggest challenge for you in, in doing that and changing position and obviously now playing on the round in this new system? I think you're always learning as a footballer, um, you know, change of position, it just then changes your, your role within the team, your function within the team and and the team is always the most important. Um, I've always said that, you know, I'll play anywhere for the team um, and, and obviously different positions require different aspects of the game. So it's it's just, a, it's always a good challenge um, when you change position because then you need to, you need to slightly adapt your game and, and, and change for what that role requires and, and like I said, it's always to help the team. Callum, looking back on uh, your career, 17 trophies, uh, how sweet was the force when compared to regaining it last season? Yeah, like you said, first one was always special um, and, and obviously the last one sort of extra special is, is doing it as, as club captain um, but you know everyone in between has, has been just as enjoyable, um, just as hard to get, just you need to work as hard as you possibly can, and, and to get that gratification when you lift a trophy is is always nice to know that you're you're doing the right thing. So you know every single one of them has has, has been as sweet as the first and last. Hi, Gil. Hi, James. Been really impressed by Greg Taylor's just blistering start to the season, possibly aided by um, a bit of new competition from Alexander Bernabe. Is that something the manager encourages throughout the squad? And if so, how does that impact on your own game? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I think to be successful in, in modern day football, you have to have a big squad. You have to have a squad of players that are always competing for positions, and and then you know it's it's up to you to to make sure that you're the one that's playing. Um, and and Greg's responded fantastically well. Um, but that's the same for every player. You know, when when any new player comes into the club, of course we're all working for the same common goal which is which is this football club we all want to make each other successful and if if you're playing or your mates playing in, in your position you still want them to do well you still want the club to do well and then obviously within that there's the sort of individual battles to, to play as such but you know as long as it's it's healthy good competition and everybody's doing the right thing for the club then you know that's where the performance levels will stay really high um. As I say, Celtic are here, uh, covered your own spell in Moss County quite extensively at the time. Um, it's fair to say you excelled and got some valuable first day experience. Although when you returned to Celtic, there were some suggestions that you could be leaving the club. Um, how close were you to a Celtic exit and could you envisage, envisage your success at the club? I think when I went on loan, my only real focus was 
to make sure that I ended up back at the club. Um, it was a challenge, you know, the, the club laid down a challenge, go and, and, and get game time, go and experience first-team football. The squad here was really strong at the time um, and there was probably going to be a limited opportunity, if any. Um, so I've seen it as a challenge. I've seen it as, you know, I need to prove people wrong. I need to prove people that I can play at this club. And, and like I said, that was my my focus while I was down there was to, to, to show and work hard and, and do the right things and come back. And, and at that time, you know, I, I wasn't too concerned about what anyone else was saying. Um, I was coming back off, you know, a positive season on loan. I felt like I was ready to make the step into the first team squad. Um, and that's what I wanted to show. So, you know, I wasn't looking too much about what anyone else was saying. It was just, for me personally, I wanted to, to break into this first team squad. So I've got two young sons and one of them plays pro youth. Um, so my question is going to be around what advice you would give to, to my boy who's only 12, um, who's he's playing with Hamilton just now. What advice would you give them around committing to the club and what behaviour should they demonstrate at that young age? Yeah, you know, the, the, the book is is very much um, surrounded around kind of early doors, behaviours, um, parents giving the right advice, you know, having a strong network and connection um, and, and just how important those sort of early years were for me in, in terms of my mindset and and what I learned um, about myself. So definitely, um, it'll definitely be helpful for, for yourself and, and obviously your boy as well. But I think I touched on it there just in an earlier call. I think as young footballers nowadays, you know, everybody has talent, but I think it's about how hard you want to work, how much are you prepared to outwork the guy next to you to to be the one that makes it. And I think you have to have that single-minded focus of, you know, you're not going to let anything get in your way and and you are determined to make yourself a professional footballer. Um, I need to ask, uh, as you progress through the club juice system, <clears throat> I need to get on to where you are now. Have there any figures at the club that you think have really helped you? to take you to where you are today, Flip. Yeah, I think, you know, guys like Tommy Burns, sort of early on, early to, to obviously mid, sort of way through the academy, I think he was a huge influence, just in, the, in general in the club and, and the vision that he's seen. And obviously the building that we're sitting in now was, was Tommy's vision. And for me to come through with someone like that at the, at the top of the tree, um, so invested in the youth academy and and the young players that were coming through, he could see that, you know, that was going to be a really valuable outlet for the club in, in terms of bringing players through and, and trying to make them Champions League players. And, and that was Tommy's big focus and, and philosophy around the Youth Academy. So to have someone like that sort of so heavily involved, um, giving you advice, being at training, um, you know, two or three times a week to 10 o'clock at night, you know, to the point where they'd have to turn the floodlights on, uh, turn the floodlights off to get everybody to go home. It was to have that type of investment from someone like Tommy. It was so invaluable. A couple of your teammates recently said that uh, you were the most likely to be a manager on the team. That hopefully you get plenty of playing time left. But is going into management something you've thought about, and have you started doing any coaching badges? I think, I think it's something that I've definitely thought about. Um, sort of coaching slash management aspect of, of football. It's something that intrigues me. Um, the way that I think about the game and, and the way I see the game, um, it certainly intrigues me in, in, in that sense. So it is something that, you know, hopefully later down the line, um, like you said, hopefully I've got many playing years left in me yet um, before I need to go down that route. But it's certainly something that, you know, excites me and, and intrigues me about it. Calum, you talked about Tommy Burns there, but the one consistent in your time at Celtic, uh, when the managers have all left, has been John Kennedy. How big an influence has he been on your career? Yeah, huge. Um, me and Kendall obviously first worked together at the youth team. Um, you know, sort of under 17s, 18s, 19s, and then we both sort of progressed to the first team at the same time. And, and to have someone that I'd worked closely with at the time, sort of making that jump as well. Um, he, he's he's been a big figure in in terms of continuity for the club as well. But just for myself, you know, I've I've known him for a number of years now, and we sort of know each other inside out, which is great. Um, and he provides that 
kind of constant continuity and, and, and what the club's about. So when any sort of new manager comes in or, or someone comes into the club, he's he's one of the first to to let them understand what the club's about, what the expectation level is, what the standards are like around the place. And um, John has been has been really valuable for the club. Um, so he's, he's a top, top guy and, and, and top coach as well. With the Champions League draw coming up, what would be your dream draw and your nightmare draw? Uh, I think I think everybody'd probably join me in the in the Real Madrid one. I think it'd be nice to to go there. Um, obviously, we've we've not had them, um, so I think that one's probably the the, the one that I want. And uh, to be honest, I don't think there's a nightmare scenario. Um, I think all the teams are top teams, and any group that we get drawn in, I think you know, like the manager speaks about, I think we we look forward to that challenge. We we want to go in and pose our game and impose our football even in these games at the biggest level. So I think it'll be a really exciting challenge for the group of players and, and for the supporters to watch. I think it'll, it'll make for good viewing.